This is Kim Meyer, host of Choose to Rise. Thanks for listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media. This is Julianne Condia, host of Rewritten here on Public House Media. Thank you so much for listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media. Once you are done with this episode, I hope you'll come check out my show, Rewritten, where we will talk about you having limitless potential and can rewrite your story at any time. No matter your background, your past, or current situation, you can have the type of life you crave. A new show comes out every single Monday. Don't forget to subscribe on iTunes so you never miss an episode of Rewritten. Thanks again for checking out the following broadcast on Public House Media. Public House Media, and I'm sitting here with LaCroix, and we may as well change the name of the show to This Week in the Pedo Apocalypse News, because things have heated up. They have heated up this week as of yesterday, I think. Um, uh, Shanina Sheik, um, the younger sister of Irina Sheik. Um, the Victoria's Secret model let it slip that the Victoria's Secret is not doing the fashion show this year. They're not doing it. It's over. It's canceled. She said that um, normally this time of year she would be training really, really, really hard to be in tippy top shape for the fashion show, and she's not doing that. No, no, no. As a matter of fact, nobody's doing that. Um, because there is no fashion show this year. They announced after last year's fashion show that they weren't going to televise it anymore. It was just something they were like an event that they were going to have, and that was going to be that. Um, and now I guess they're not doing it at all because if they were, then these girls would be training to be in absolute perfect shape for the Victoria's Secret fashion show, but now they don't have to. They can stay home and crack open a pint of haagen because they don't have to worry. It's not their problem this year. <laughs> it's not their problem, which, I mean, you know, whatever. Good for them. Uh, but the thing of it is, is that this has come on the heels of all of this news circulating um, around Jeff Epstein and his relationship with Les Wexner, who is the longtime CEO of L Brands. And the media keeps saying that, oh, he's the founder of Victoria's Secret. He's not the founder of Victoria's Secret. Um, he bought Victoria's Secret from another person in the 80s who then, I was always told that the guy sold Victoria's Secret to... Les Wexner, aka Limited Brands, or L Brands as it's called now. Um, and then he killed himself because he only sold it for like a hundred thousand dollars and then they it, it it like took it off. Um they used to and back in the eighties, or maybe the nineties too, um, they used to call Les Wexner the like purveyor, like the purveyor of the shopping mall, basically, because he did the Limited, Express, I'm assuming also Limited 2, Victoria's Secret. Um, and they also had up until the closure of Henry Bendel, which I will never forgive them for. Um, I was upset about that for weeks. It was like traumatic, like absolutely traumatic. It's so traumatic that I sit here, where are my candles? I sit here and I, I sit around and I smell my Henry Bandle candles, because I, and I'm not even going to burn them anymore, because this is all, these, the, these are the candles that you get on, um, on your birthday, uh, at Bendel, and never going to get another one ever again, and I'm very, very upset about it, so I don't burn those, I just sit around and smell them, like a weirdo, but 
that's that's the life that I have to live because they wrecked an iconic Fifth Avenue designer. Like I can't even I can't get over it. I will never get over it. That I will never get over. Um but anyway, so the story goes is that he starts like, you know, making these brands like just huge national, international, um gigantic, you know, anchors for malls and making millions and millions of dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars. And then the guy that was the real founder of Victoria's Secret um, killed himself because he got rid of it for $100,000 when he could have had uh, millions. But it makes me wonder now, though, like, is that even really a true story? Like, did he, did he kill himself? Like, or did he get ousted out of his own thing and then that was that? That's what I want to know. All right, I need to take a second and share the show because this is not working. Share on a page that you manage. Okay, not that page. Nobody looks at that page. Meow meow. Okay. Post, perhaps? Let's see if this worked. Sound is good, says David Bobke. Oh, thank God. That's for the best. Oh, Roger, thank you. Thank you. I've had so many meetings and interviews this week. It's crazy. Um, this is like my third wardrobe change for the day because I'm just, just out here hustling. Just out here doing, just out here doing the most is what I've been doing. But we'll turn our attention back to Jeffrey Epstein because... When he first got arrested, there was a girl, an Italian model that came out and, you know, in chorus with a bunch of others. But her story was kind of interesting. And that's how this whole Wexner Epstein kind of drama got started or kicked off again. Because she said that her agency, the Italian model that was on Stay New York, her agency had sent her to go see Jeffrey Epstein I mean, like, oh, he's friends with, uh, with Les Wexner, um, you know, go, 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 go see him, and by see him, they mean sleep with him, um, and you'll maybe get a job at Victoria's Secret, and she was like, oh, what? So she goes to go meet him, they didn't tell her that that was the case, but that's what they should have said, um, and she basically met him and shook his hand, and then he tried ripping her clothes off, basically. Um, she said that she left in tears and then, like, not only left wherever they were in tears, but she left the United States and was like, I don't get down with modeling in America. This is crazy. You guys are running, like, some sort of weird prostitution ring. I'll go back to Milan and kick it in Italy. Never mind. Never mind, never mind, never mind. So, because this has got, the story's gotten so freaking crazy and so out of control, and all of these pedophiles keep getting arrested, which is my favorite, um, makes me so happy. There's, like, literally nothing that makes me happier than all of these pedophiles getting arrested. It's like, it's like Christmas times a thousand. That's amazing. Anyway, <laughs> um, so that's when they started saying, like, oh, Jeff Epstein's friends with the founder of Victoria's Secret. He's friends with the founder of Victoria's Secret. So, um, they're not just friends. So, as, as it happens, nobody really knows how Epstein became the billionaire that he is. Like, he doesn't really have much to show for himself. And there's been a common theme throughout his life. And on top of it, um, there's been several people that have been like, I know billionaires, I have plenty of billionaire friends, and they all work 26 hours a day. Jeff Epstein doesn't do anything. He just jets around from place to place or island to island or whatever, and he's like, I've never seen the guy work ever. But when you start to unravel the relationship between Epstein and Wexner, it starts to get really, really crazy. Like, they weren't just friends. So apparently, Jeff Epstein dropped out of college taught math at Dalton for, like, a hot second, and then worked at, like, 
a bank a little. And then all of a sudden, Les Wexner puts him in charge. He's like his fortune manager in charge of all of his stuff. So all of his money, all of his properties. And then, if that's not crazy enough, um, gave him power of attorney. Les Wexner signed over power of attorney over himself to Jeff Epstein. So he could buy and sell things. He could hire and fire people. He could write checks. He could make deposits. Like he was a hundred thousand percent in charge of Les Wexner. Financially, legally, you name it. And then all of a sudden, a jet that limited brands used to own is now in Jeff Epstein's name. A mansion in Manhattan that used to be owned by Les Wexner became Jeffrey Epstein's mansion. And then he somehow snaked the money out of somewhere in there to go buy his pedo island, um, which is actually named like on paper, um, Little St. James Island. And apparently the story goes that nobody around him could figure out why on earth this like failed, defunct, occasional math teacher is not only managing a fortune of hundreds of millions of dollars on top of physical property, but this man signed over power of attorney to him and he was completely of sound mind and body. Like that's just not something that you, that you do. That's a major decision. Jelly, you have to stop sneezing. Nobody wants to hear that. Oh my God, these dogs are so bad. They're so rotten. It's crazy. Um, Jelly, I said stop sneezing. Enough. She's doing this for attention. She's rotten. Anyway, this doesn't make any sense. So, a couple days ago, or maybe it was yesterday. I don't know. I forget what day it is. I posted this article about, um, let me find it. Epstein's friend left messages saying he was procuring two eight-year-old girls for him to sexually abuse court documents revealed. I told you when we popped champagne on the first, woohoo, Jeff Epstein got arrested. It's the pedo apocalypse is upon us. I told you that it wasn't just teenage girls. It was children, actual children. And on top of that, the air traffic controllers at the airport, at the air, airport's kind of a strong word, but the airstrip in the part of the Virgin Islands where his plane takes off and lands from, that they saw him, those air traffic controllers that are like, hey, land your plane, or hey, take off, or whatever, saw him boarding the plane with children and getting off the plane with children, like actual children. And then there was another whole thing about how once kids lost their braces, he wasn't interested anymore, which is like so disgusting and probably has a lot to do with that dental chair that they found in his house when in Pole Beach when they, that got raided in 2005. Okay, so moving on. So let's unpack this, um, this messages uh, article that came out yesterday because there's some things in here that I have said before that this is going to tack on to. Messages left from multimillionaire investor Jeff Epstein around the time Palm Beach police first started their investigation into the registered sex offender in 2005 show that he might have been trying to procure two eight-year-old girls. Might have, he was. Whoever was supplying them was using them as a bargaining chip is what it looks like. The message pad also shows Epstein, shows calls Epstein received from a former member of the British royal family along with details of an iconic designer's weekend visit to his mansion in Palm Beach. Oh my goodness, do these dogs unplug my computer? Oh, they're so rotten, hang on. Animals, what did you do? I'm telling you, the rotten knows no bounds around here. Anyway, back to, where were we? The message pad also showed calls Epstein received from a former member of the British royal family. We talked about that before. Hey there, Prince Andrew. Um, 
along with details of an iconic designer's weekend visit to his mansion in Palm Beach and multiple messages from his close friend Jean-Luc Brunel. This Brunel dude is the is the, the key of this whole smaller situation of the overall big picture. One of the messages appears to reference underage girls, while another notes how an 18-year-old loves Jeffrey. In another message, Brunel relays a doctor's opinion on how to treat a sexually transmitted disease. The Daily Mail obtained these messages by filing an FOIA request for the Palm Beach records related to Epstein's legal battle since he left the Florida prison. Epstein was arrested by federal agents on July 6th in New Jersey after his return from a Paris trip and was charged with child sex trafficking in violation of Title 18, United States Code, Section 1591. He is suspected of sex trafficking minors in Florida and New York. He has been. He's been convicted of that before. The new charges against Epstein suggest the Department of Justice attempt to redeem its 2008 decision where then top federal prosecutor Alexander Acosta, who we've talked about, talked about before on the show, cut a questionable, questionable, straight trash is what it was, plea deal with the financier accused of engaging in sex with dozens of underage girls. He wasn't accused. He was convicted. He went to jail. He's not accused. Convicted. You start out being accused, and then you get arraigned, and you have a trial. And then a judge or a jury decides if you are guilty or not. And then you get a sentencing. It's not still accused of something that he went to jail for. Although police found evidence suggesting that he regularly molested and trafficked dozens of underage girls, he was handed a sentence of just 13 months of part-time custody in county jail. What they mean by part-time custody is he was on work release, even though he doesn't have a job. And if you have any... um questionable friends uh you will know what work release is but if you don't <laughs> that means you just sleep at jail and then you get up in the morning and go to work in his case and then you go back i, I mean just cushy as can be whereas reports state that epstein message pad was first obtained by police during their search of his mansion at palm beach on october 2005 so over well over 10 years ago now uh, almost 15, jeez. The pad also included a message from his associate, Ghislaine Maxwell, his French friend that is a lady that is constantly out procuring little girls and God knows what else for him, uh, stating that Epstein and his age-appropriate companion were hosting Tom Ford in Palm Beach. The note adds that she let Larry Epstein... Larry, um, Epstein's pilot, go and asked to contact Maxwell to let her know if she should pick up the designer in the helicopter. If I find out that Tom Ford has been up to this crazy ratchet disgustingness, I'm going to lose my mind. A message left in January stated that uh, Her Royal Highness Duchess of York, a.k.a. Sarah Fergie Ferguson, um, is expecting your call. Fergie and Prince Andrew have some explaining to do, and I want to hear it from them, not the palace or the queen or any of these folks. I want to know what they were up to. The pad also had seven messages from a person named David Copperfield. Magic David called. One note read, it's jackpot. I told you on the first episode that David Copperfield also has an island, and it's just a hop, skip, and a jump from Epstein's Little Petal Island, too. If you ask around in the Twitter sphere, maybe, talk to some of these Playboy girls that have gotten invited to David Copperfield's Island. Brunel, at 9 a.m. on April 1st, called Epstein, leaving a message saying, he has a teacher for you, to, for you to teach you how to speak Russian. She is two by eight years, two X eight. So I'm saying two by eight years old, not blonde. Lessons are free and you can have them first today if you call me back. Brunel then followed up again at 8.31 a.m. and 9.04 a.m. asking Epstein to get in touch with him. If you're getting Russian lessons, why would it matter if you're getting them first or not? Anybody care to explain that? Pedo secret code? 
The lawyer of Epstein's victims, Bradley Edwards, reportedly included these messages as evidence after Epstein filed a civil lawsuit against him. One court filing submitted by Edwards and his lawyer stated, in light of these circumstances of the case, this message reasonably suggests to Edwards that Brunel might have been procuring two eight-year-old girls for Epstein to sexually abuse. According to widely circulated press reports reviewed by Edwards, Brunel in his 60s and has a reputation throughout the world and especially in the modeling industry as a cocaine addict that has for years molested children through modeling agencies while acting as their agent. Conduct that has been subject to critical reports, books, several news articles, and 60 Minutes documentaries on Brunel's sexual exploitation of underage models, the court filing added. The man has a 60 Minutes special on how he is an agent to children and then molest them. Of course he's pals with Epstein. Why wouldn't they be? Epstein eventually settled the legal battle later and issued an apology after Edwards countersued the investor the invest the investor for defamation. Whatever. The multimillionaire who has not yet pleaded guilty to the recent charges against him and is currently in a New York prison, three cells down from El Chapo, and recently tried to take his own life, allegedly. He was found in a semi-conscious state in his prison cell with bruises on his neck. Authorities are investigating whether any prison inmate was behind the attack. We already talked about his little shenanigans that he, uh, that he tried to pull a couple weeks ago when he asked for all, he just, you know, offered the sun, moon, and stars to be able to get bailed out and the judge denied him bail. And then all of a sudden he's like, I'm unconscious on my cell floor. I need to be moved. I need to be moved. Move me. I'm a billionaire. I can't stay here. Um, so yeah, that's that's this week's grossness and the pedo apocalypse. How wonderful. How lovely. How disgusting. My God. But you know what though? For as fun as it is to like do this like Victoria's Secret like takedown and like all that jazz, um, I really, really want these FAA documents published that show all of the names that were going back and forth on Epstein's jet to and from his little pedophile island. That's what I want to see. That's what I'm waiting for next. My big thing that I was waiting for, who was this trying to message me? Um, the big thing that I was waiting for was for him to get arrested because Jeff Epstein is the domino, the first domino that's just going to push over the rest of them. And it's going to be beautiful and amazing and awesome. But when those FAA documents come out and they, they name names, oh, it's going to be glorious. I literally can't wait. We'll pop another champagne when that happens because it's going to be so much fun. So I will see you all next week for another episode of No Filter Friday and Public House Media, which is now um, the Pedo News Network, basically. Um, and we will all talk about this disgustingness and we will all celebrate that we are get, we get to be alive in the time where these gigantic elite pedophile sex trafficking child murderous rings are being brought down. Because that's a very exciting thing. Also... Check out other shows on no, on, uh, on Public House Media, like Choose to Rise, Confessions of a Military Spouse. Um, what else is going on? CJ and Cell. There's, like, there's plenty of other shows that are not nearly as like downtrodden as No Filter Friday. So go check them out. And if you're a podcast listener, um, you know, leave a, leave a review or a star or something or a rating or any of that jazz. And share this show because it's only going to get crazier. And I will see you all next week for another another edition of craziness. Bye 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 bye.